Hello and good afternoon from BBC Spotlight. If you're catching a train in the southwest today, expect some disruption because of the hangover from the RMT strike over the past three days. There's a warning about reduced services over the coming days, with more strike action planned for next week. Our reporter Scott Bingham is at Plymouth Railway Station. Network Rail has been advising passengers to avoid travelling on the railways unless absolutely necessary across the entire Christmas and New Year period. As the latest RMT strikes ended this morning, there are trains running across the Southwest network, but the timetables are subject to a fair degree of disruption, and services could be hit by last minute cancellations due to the ongoing RMT overtime ban. As ever, the advice from the train operator to passengers who have to take the train is to check before traveling. Today is the first day back. We've got uh, some delays this morning due to some overrunning engineering works, plus the fact it was a late startup anyway. We do anticipate trains to be really busy today and it is a reduced timetable, so please do check before you travel. Unless a resolution is found any time soon to this strike, the disruption is likely to continue well into January. Members of the Transport Salaried Staff Association, that's the admin and ticket office staff, are due to strike tomorrow. And the RMT is set to begin further strikes on the 3rd of January until the 7th. Train Drivers Union ASLEF will also walk out on the 5th of January. Network Rail and GWR are warning services are unlikely likely to return to anything like normal before January the 9th at the earliest. Scott Bingham, BBC Spotlight, Plymouth. A sea swimmer on holiday in Cornwall has had to be winched to safety by a rescue helicopter after being cut off by the incoming tide. She managed to call 999 when she became stranded on rocks at Trebarwith Strand around four o'clock yesterday afternoon. Polseth and Boscastle Coast Guard teams, as well as Port Isaac and Padstow lifeboats were involved, but the woman needed to be airlifted. Obviously in the pitch black with eight to nine foot surf dumping onto the beach, it makes it pretty pretty desperate. Um, luckily, we located the casualty pretty early on with the local Coast Guard on scene. Um, she was seven metres back from the surf line, so we deemed it that she was not in grave and imminent danger. So it was safer for us to make our way back out through the surf and wait for Coast Guard 924 to come and effect a rescue. One lane on the A390 in Cornwall remains closed at Grand Pound after an accident on Christmas Eve. Structural engineers will be assessing the damage caused to the Grade 2 listed town hall and museum. A car crashed into the building in 4th Street and ploughed through the ground floor wall. With Christmas shopping been and gone, many were back out on the high street today looking for some bank holiday bargains. Sales were up over the festive period from last year, but footfall is still down compared to pre-pandemic levels. National figures show a fall of 30% compared to Boxing Day before COVID three years ago. However, the signs are places like Truro are bucking the national trend. Christmas week, we've got, say, a 21% increase week on week to 2022, the full week before Christmas. That was over double the regional and the UK uplift for 2022. So we're really pleased with the last week, uh, but we need more weeks like that, of course. Now we know you love an animal story on BBC Spotlight, and we thought you'd like this update on a nine-year-old dog that was rescued earlier this year. Flossie the Terrier almost didn't see Christmas after she fell down a rabbit hole near Crediton. She was pulled to safety after four days when a neighbour heard her howling. Flossie's owner says it hasn't changed her one bit, but she now wears a GPS tracker. Hello, baby. No, oh, she's alive. It's been a it was a fluke, really, that we managed to get her back when we did. Good girl, Flossie. Oh, there we go. Baby. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, is it good girl? You'll never guess what I got you for Christmas this year. Something I hope to last forever. Whenever I think back to it, it feels like a bad dream. I just, I can't believe that we managed to get her back. That's the one that went that side.
So we know where you're going, don't we? Yes, we do. So yes, it's just lovely. And I can't imagine how I'd be feeling right now if she wasn't with us this Christmas. It would be very sad indeed. You know, no sign of any regret. You really would have thought that she'd have learned her lesson and be quite cautious about leaving our side or going too far away, but no. Given the chance, if you look the opposite direction, she does. Oh, what a sweetie. Well, let's take a look at the weather now with Ian Ferguson. Hello, very good afternoon to you. It's been turning thoroughly wet and increasingly windy as we've uh, started the afternoon and indeed it will follow in similar vein as we head on into this evening uh, with some quite strong gusts of wind over the next 12, 24 hours, certainly into the mid to upper 40s miles per hour. Now by tomorrow morning through first light, we've already ushered in the next spell of wet and windy weather and indeed a Met Office yellow warning caters for this uh, part of our region. Uh, that starts later tonight. It runs through tomorrow morning, but all of us certainly seeing a pretty wet and windy spell. The temperatures uh, tonight around about 9 to 10 Celsius. Tomorrow then the morning continues in similar fashion. Some of that rain pretty heavy, quite persistent, certainly strong winds wherever you happen to be, not least around the south coast. Through the afternoon the balance shifts towards more in the way of drier weather but punctuated still by showers, some of those quite lively. The temperatures tomorrow despite all of that going on well above average for the time of year about 11 to 12 Celsius. Bye bye. Well, that's the latest from the Lunchtime team. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye for now. Good evening from Spotlight. Severe disruption to train services in the region is continuing with more strike action planned for next week. Today, travellers experienced delays and cancellations from the hangover of the RMT strike. Our reporter Scott Bingham reports from Plymouth Railway Station. Network Rail has been advising passengers to avoid travelling on the railways unless absolutely necessary across the entire Christmas and New Year period. As the latest RMT strikes ended this morning, there are trains running across the Southwest network, but the timetables are subject to a fair degree of disruption. As ever, the advice from the train operators to passengers who have to take the train is to check before travelling. Today is the first day back. We've got uh, some delays this morning due to some overrunning engineering works, plus the fact it was a late start-up anyway. We do anticipate trains to be really busy today, and it is a reduced timetable, so please do check before you travel. I mean, it's annoying, but again, I'm with the workers, they need their money, but yeah, it's inconvenient for the average person. We booked these tickets on the train about six months ago, because we didn't know about the strikes then. Personally, I think it was a little bit unfair. I mean, I do understand where they're coming from, but, you know, it's not very nice for people who need to go home and see their families and things like that. The disruption is likely to continue well into January. Members of the Transport Salaried Staff Association, that's the admin and ticket office staff, are due to strike tomorrow. And the RMT is set to begin further strikes on the 3rd of January until the 7th. Train Drivers Union ASLEF will also walk out on the 5th of January. Network Rail and GWR are warning services are unlikely to return to anything like normal before January the 9th at the earliest. Scott Bingham, BBC Spotlight, Plymouth. A sea swimmer on holiday in Cornwall has been winched to safety by a rescue helicopter after being cut off by the incoming tide. She managed to call 999 herself when she became stranded on rocks at Trebarwith Strand at around four o'clock yesterday afternoon. Polzeth and Boscastle Coast Guard teams, as well as Port Isaac and Padstow lifeboats were involved in the rescue. If you are planning on going for a swim, then please only swim in areas that you're familiar with. And if you're unfamiliar with the area, then please exercise a bit of caution. Only go where you see other swimmers going, where you see locals going. A lot of people like to go for adventure swims, uh, which, which I totally understand. However, um, please don't take any unnecessary risks. Please ensure that you have a safe exit, uh, no matter what the state of the tide is. 
Now, the tills were ringing out again today with shoppers looking for bank holiday bargains. Despite some high streets doing well in the run-up to Christmas, footfall is still not back to pre-pandemic levels. National figures show a fall of 30% compared to Boxing Day three years ago. Gemma Woodman reports. Braving the rain in the hunt for a bargain, with some shunning the online sales to support their local shops. Just went into one of the local little shops and bought some local Cornish things. Very nice. Have you been doing a bit more local shopping then? I like to if I can do, yeah, because little shops like that, they need our help, don't they? I'd much rather be supporting them than having to buy everything online, uh, keep our town alive. Customer loyalty has made for a good year for Unica on Truro's High Street. It's been very busy, like this is the first time I've seen the shop sort of this quiet for a few days now, especially after the Christmas season, but yeah, it's been lovely. The cost of living crisis meant people were slow to start their Christmas shopping, but it's thought the postal strike did help drive more face-to-face custom for some. It built up in the last three weeks um, and we were well supported by locals buying local produce. Christmas week we've got say a 21% increase uh, week on week to 2022, the full week before Christmas. That was over double the regional and the UK uplift for 2022. So we're really pleased with the last week. Uh, but we need more weeks like that, of course. National figures by the retail analyst Springboard show that footfall on our high streets is still sharply down on pre-pandemic levels. Nevertheless, there has been bounce back on last year, and the picture rosy is still in places like Truro, showing that these retailers will get a Boxing Day boost, despite there being some cautious consumers. Gemma Woodman, BBC Spotlight, Truro. Now, we know you love an animal story on Spotlight, so we thought you'd like this update. Flossie the Terrier almost didn't see Christmas after getting trapped down a rabbit hole near Crediton. She was pulled to safety after four days when a neighbour heard her howling. Hello, baby. No, she's alive. It was a fluke, really, that we managed to get her back when we did. Good girl, Flossie. Oh, there we go. Baby. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, is it good girl? You'll never guess what I got you for Christmas this year. Something I hold to last forever. Whenever I think back to it, it feels like a bad dream. I just. I can't believe that we managed to get her back. That's the one that went that side. So we know where you're going, don't we? Yes, we do. So yes, it's just lovely. And I can't imagine how I'd be feeling right now if she wasn't with us this Christmas. It would be very sad indeed. You know, no sign of any regret. You really would have thought that she'd have learned her lesson and be quite cautious about leaving our side or going too far away, but no. Given the chance, if you look the opposite direction, she off. Oh, welcome home, Flossie. Let's find out what the weather's up to now. Here's Ian Ferguson. Hello, very good evening to it. Readily turned into a thoroughly wet and windy story through the course of the day. The bulk of that rain now moving away towards the east of us. Something of a lull for a while into the first part of tonight, but it won't last. The next area of wet and windy weather spreads in from the southwest at two o'clock in the morning and indeed onwards to a good part of tomorrow. Uh, much of our part of the region will come under a yellow warning for heavy rain. So there could be quite a bit of that uh, certainly out on the road network uh, through a fair part of the day. Uh, temperatures overnight around about 9 to 10 celsius a noticeably windy day tomorrow gusts at least towards mid upper 40s miles per hour with further wet weather through the first half of the day later through the afternoon we'll shift the balance to overall something brighter but nonetheless punctuated by showers some of those fairly frequent fairly heavy and it will remain blustery right the way through the day with temperatures about 11 to 12 celsius above average for the time of year Further wet and windy spells to come through the unsettled end of this week. Bye-bye. That's it from us for now. I'll be back with the late news at 11.15. Bye-bye for now.
Good evening from Spotlight. The tills were ringing out again today with shoppers looking for bank holiday bargains. But despite some high streets doing well in the run up to Christmas, footfall is still not back to pre-pandemic levels. National figures show a fall of 30 percent compared to Boxing Day three years ago. Gemma Woodman reports. Braving the rain in the hunt for a bargain, with some shunning the online sales to support their local shops. Just oh, went into you. one of the lo local little shops and bought some local Cornish things. Very nice. Oh. Have you been doing a bit more local shopping then? I like to if I can do, yeah, because little shops like that, they need our help, don't they? I'd much rather be yeah. supporting them than having to buy everything online, uh, keep our town alive. Customer loyalty has made for a good year for Unica on Truro's High Street. It's been very busy, like this is the first time I've seen the shop sort of this quiet for a few days now, especially after the Christmas season, but yeah, it's been lovely. The cost of living crisis meant people were slow to start their Christmas shopping, but it's thought the postal strike did help drive more face-to-face -face custom for some. It built up in the last three weeks um, and we were well supported by locals buying local produce. Christmas week we, we've got say a 21% increase uh, week on week to 2022, the full week before Christmas. That was over double the regional and the UK uplift for 2022. So we're really pleased with the last week. Uh, but we need more weeks like that, of course. National figures by the retail analyst Springboard show that footfall on our high streets is still sharply down on pre-pandemic levels. Nevertheless, there has been bounce back on last year and the picture rosy is still in places like Truro, showing that these retailers will get a Boxing Day boost despite there being some cautious consumers. Gemma Woodman, BBC Spotlight, Truro. A sea swimmer on holiday in Cornwall has been winched to safety by a rescue helicopter after being cut off by the tide. She called 999 by herself when she became stranded on rocks at Trebarwith Strand. Lifeboats from Port Isaac and Padstow were involved. If you are planning on going for a swim, then please only swim in areas that you're familiar with. And if you're unfamiliar with the area, then please exercise a bit of caution. Only go where you see other swimmers going, where you see locals going. A lot of people like to go for adventure swims, uh, which, which I totally understand. However, um, please don't take any unnecessary risks. Please ensure that you have a safe exit, uh, no matter what the state of the tide is. Network Rail is advising passengers to avoid travelling by train over the rest of the festive period unless absolutely necessary. Industrial action continues to cause widespread disruption. Reduced services have been running across the southwest today as the latest RMT strikes came to an end. But ongoing overtime bans and walkouts by ticket office staff and train drivers are likely to cause further disruption. If you are out and about, uh, make sure you're checking those train times, especially if you're traveling late at night. Try and avoid those last those last trains of the evening. Uh, we will obviously make sure that we get people to where they want to be. But just bear in mind that there will be some disruption and trains will be busy. Time to see now if there's more rain in store. Here's Ian with the weather. Hello, very good evening to you. Uh, at the moment, at least, something of a temporary lull in terms of the wet weather having declined, but it will pick up again with this next area of wet and windy weather spreading up through the second half of the night from two o'clock in the morning and through a good part of tomorrow, much of our region actually will fall under a yellow warning for heavy rain from the Met Office. Quite disruptive potentially out on the roads and temperatures overnight for what it's worth uh, around about 9 to 10 Celsius. Certainly quite mild despite everything else. Now tomorrow, particularly through the first half of the day, further periods of rain again, some of that heavy and persistent. We will see a transfer through the afternoon towards something overall brighter or that bit clearer, but nonetheless blustery and yes, showers in the mix. Some of those still fairly heavy where you happen to be catching them. The temperatures tomorrow are getting up to about 11 to 12 Celsius. There will be further spells of wet and windy weather to come through the remainder of this unsettled week. Bye bye. That's it from the team here at Spotlight tonight. Whatever you're doing, enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.